Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com and I want to quickly show you how to create a Docker Compose YAML file and run that Docker Compose up file to get an Nginx Apache web server, maybe even a, a Tomcat server running quickly. Now, starting off, as you can see, I've got Docker desktop for Windows installed. There's no images, there's no containers, and there's no magic going on here. I can even do a Docker version just to prove to you that I've got Docker installed version version 20. That's a good one. And what I want to do is I want to run this Apache HTTP server Docker image, also known as HTTPD, as you can see. But I don't want to run it with a great big long command. I could type this in, say, hey, I want to call the container public website. I want to assign one and a half CPUs, put in two gigs of memory, do the port mapping. But I mean, that's a lot to type in all at once. <laughs> Fat fingers could cause some problems typing that in. And of course, if you need to stop and start these servers fairly often, well, you don't wanna have to keep writing those in. So a better alternative, create a file called docker-compose.yaml, yet another markup language, and put all that information that you normally would have just put on the run command and put it into Docker Compose. And if you're wondering, why do we use Docker Compose? Well, it's so you don't have to have a giant command line argument to start up a Docker container, but everything we could have done with that Docker run, we can do right here with Docker Compose. Now, I've got a, a little website right here. I'm gonna deploy that a little later. I'm just gonna start off with a new file named docker-compose.yaml. yet another markup language that's what yaml stands for and i'm going to open this up and i'm just going to copy and paste in this docker compose content right there now one thing to note two spaces on every indent that's very important but i'm going to save this file as you can see i'm going to be running the Apache HTTPD official Docker container, one and a half CPUs, two megs of RAM, run it all on port 80. That Docker compose file is completed. I've also got my PowerShell open here into the same folder that that Docker compose file is. And all I have to say is Docker compose up and look in the background at the images and containers. And when I do that, all of a sudden, Docker Compose is going to consume that Docker Compose.yaml file. Look at all of the scrumptious information that's in there, and it's going to spin up a container accordingly. Do you not believe me? Well, look over here. There's the image that's been downloaded, HTTPD. That wasn't there before, and boom, there's an image named after the folder in which it was found in called Number Guesser. We've now got a container running. It's called Public Website, and Boom, right there, that's the name we wanted to assign it. You can even see it's running on port 80, which is what we suggested. And you know, I know some of you are from Missouri, you wanna be shown this working, so there we go, localhost, it works. I can't argue with that. Now, that's step one. There's some other cool things that you can do with the Docker Compose file. One of them is you can actually run multiple containers at the same time. So let me throw in, boom, a little Nginx here. Uh, so if I wanted to run an Nginx container, I'd have to you know, run a second command like this with all this parameterization on it if I wanted to do it just at the command line. But you can stuff all of that into a very simple docker compose.yaml file. And when you run docker compose up again, well, all of these servers will run. And notice here, I got a little difference, you know, updated the CPUs, increased the amount of memory, and I even have this one running on port Wayne Gretzky. Now I'm gonna save that right there. That's port 99, shout out to the great one. And docker compose up again. Now I'm gonna come over here I got the HTTPD image. I'm going to junk that other container that was up there. Come in here, do Docker Compose up, 
and let's see what happens now. Docker Compose, not dash up, it's just up. What was I thinking? So there we go, Docker Compose up. We are now gonna read this new Docker Compose file right here that has all of this great information in it. We're gonna pull down the Nginx image. So if I go on to images, you'll see Nginx has been introduced. If I take a look at my container, you'll notice that we now have the nginx app running that's running on port 99 and if i open up a browser and give a salute to wayne gretzky right here boom all of a sudden we've got the nginx server running and you know i can do this all day i'm a big fan of java that means i'm a big fat fan of tomcat as well if you wanted to run a tomcat container boom just type in tomcat here and give some information about the Tomcat container. That's the name of the image, Tomcat Latest. Heck, we can give that 3.5 CPUs if we want. Have that running on port 8080. And now I've described three different servers to run at the same time, and I don't have to do three consecutive Docker run commands with all of these parameters set up in here that I could easily type in wrong. And, you know, I wouldn't type it in wrong, but those systems administrators would. They can't be trusted with anything. Now, the other thing I want to do here, which is a little bit of razzle-dazzle, I promised you this at the start. I've actually got under this number guesser folder, as you can see, that is the directory from which all of these different commands are running. I'm going to do a control C there to stop the image. You can see right there, that's the number guesser folder where I'm running that command. That is also the folder where the Docker compose file is. And it's also the folder where that website folder is. I'm going to open up this website and show you this amazing app. There it is, the number guesser game. Looks amazing, fun to play. Play this all day long if you really wanted to. But you can see right now it's being hosted on, well, the C drive. And we want to actually host that in our Docker container. So how would you do that? Well, you'd go in and you find that section where it describes how to configure the Apache web server and you do a volume mapping. And normally the Apache web server serves up files from this htdocs folder. That's where the file that says it works is currently located. But what I wanna say is I wanna say, hey, don't just serve up the files that you regularly served up from there. I want you to instead map this htdocs folder where you serve up web files to my website folder, the dot says. From the current directory, look for the subdirectory called website. That's what that dot means. And in that website folder, I've got index, script, and style. This here is going to map that internal volume to this local volume. And all of these files are going to be served up when I run. And so, you know, that was even too long to throw up here on this command. Like imagine how, well, you don't have to imagine because I can bring reality right to you. I'd have to throw that volume mapping in there to complete that command. That's a lot to, to type out each time. Instead, we can just put it right here in this Docker volume file. So I'll click Control Save there. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make sure that I've got all of this deleted here. So I'll remove that number guesser container, come back to the command line. You know what I'm gonna write. I'm gonna do Docker compose up, click Enter. And this is going to now download, well, it's going to download the Tomcat image, which it did not have previously. And then it's going to run all three of those containers based on the information that I've got in this Docker Compose file. Now, one of the other things that, uh, you know, I want to stress, one of the big reasons why you want this Docker Compose file is not just to avoid having to type out these huge long commands. You know, I mean, there is a chance that if you have to run three containers, you know, maybe your administrator will forget to do one of the Docker run commands. If you've got it all in the same file, they all get run at the same time. But, you know, the other thing is, all of this is going into a source code management tool. And so you can maintain a revision history. Uh, you can see who's made changes. If something goes wrong, you can find a person to point a finger at. You know, These are all the things that you wanna do in an enterprise environment. Now it does look like this is running. And on port 80, we have mapped the websites folder. I'm not seeing any error messages here. So if I come over here and type in localhost 
and go to port 80, well, boom, the page <laughs> was cached from before. That's why it uh, showed up, uh, it works originally. But if I now go to port number 80, well, you can see that I'm actually serving this web page up from Apache. So I no longer have to, you know, uh, even copy things into that folder. I can just use it as a local volume. But that just shows you how great it is to use Docker Compose, especially when compared to Docker Run all the time. You can put everything into one simple file and manage all of your containers, certainly the ones that should be running together to support a single application in one single file. Now that's how easy it is to use Docker Compose. That's a simple example of Docker Compose, the Docker Compose YAML file. If you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We got lots of great tutorials on Docker, Kubernetes, cloud native development, Java, DevOps, Git, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ and why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?